Hello and welcome back to AWS reInvent 2022 here at the Venetian and AWS on Air. I'm Steve Roberts, developer advocate for .NET and PowerShell. I'm joined still by... I am. I am Grabelli. I've been here all morning. You know me by now, I hope. <laughs> I'd hope so. And for this segment, we have a special guest, Ori from Checkmarks. Hi. Please introduce yourself. Tell Hi. people a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. So I'm Ori, the VP of Product Management for Checkmarks, the application security leader in the market. Okay, so before we get into Checkmarks, I have to ask, Steve. the cake. Oh, What's the cake? Yeah, so actually, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is about infrastructure's code security. Okay, and luckily, or, you know, as, as a matter of um, this morning, we just did one million downloads for Kicks, the open source project. So we brought up a cake. It's, everybody here can, you know, give it a try. I heard it's great. Uh, okay. So we celebrate this great achievement of one million downloads for Kicks. Cool. I didn't hear anything you said because I'm just Beyond staring cake. at the cake. I'm really, <laughs> so really sorry. So come over to the booth. We'll give you a slides and you. you Only joking. I, I'm a big fan of Kix. Um, congratulations. Thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. But you want to tell us about Kix? Yeah. So first up, maybe we should start with uh, a bit about infrastructure as code for Absolutely. those who are unfamiliar, who who haven't moved yet to deployments through infrastructure as code. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, as part of cloud native, uh, we see more and more. Um, parts of the systems that are now being saved as code. I think the best example mm -hmm. is infrastructure as code, where you know, in the past it would take you like, okay, I need this infrastructure, I need this firewall, I need this database, and you know, three weeks later you would have it because everybody, everything was uh, have to be spinned manually, right, or interactively. So mm -hmm. infrastructure as code takes all of that and puts it, you know, at the speed of DevOps. So you define your cloud configuration. You put it to the tool, you know, whether it's CloudFormation, Terraform, anything, and right. that's it. You have infrastructure as code as part of your pipelines, as part of your cloud deployment, and that's it. You don't need to worry about your configuration, your in cloud infrastructure at all. I mean, this is something that I've seen across the entire industry, right? Is, is this movement towards getting developers more and more access to things that traditionally developers didn't have access to, like infrastructure, like Security, which we're also going to talk, uh, vastly yeah. important with Kicks. Um, so once you actually transform your infrastructure into uh, code, code, code. Yep. you can start versioning it. You can start, you know, checking code it review, in. Code review, bugs, exactly. everything. But there's a lot of misconfigurations, a lot of security risks when you are defining out infrastructure. Yeah, I think infrastructure as code is a great example of, you know, the famous with great power comes great responsibility, yeah, right? Absolutely. Because the thing about infrastructure as code, in a matter of minutes, you can have, you know, a misconfigured infrastructure or cloud resource in production, and like three minutes later, it's already exploited by, you know, a malicious hacker. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is where we need to understand it brings great benefits, but we also need to understand the risks. Yes. And this is exactly why we created Infrastructure Scott Security in both, you know, our commercial offering as Checkmarks One and also in Kix, which is completely open source and available for everybody to, to use it. I love it. Yeah, yeah I mean, this, is, this goes back to the, f the famous, always touted shared security responsibility Building. model of yeah. AWS, yes. right? We, we give you the, the access to CloudFormation, but it's ultimately up to you to build it securely. And that's why we love partners like, like yeah. you all at Checkmarks, because you help customers with that security. Right? It's, a, it's an interesting problem, one I've never actually considered for ISA. I mean, ISA I think of, you know, traditionally it's like, okay, I'm eliminating the error, the human error of clicking around a console, yep. building infrastructure, and then I forget about what I've actually built. I've never actually considered the security implications of that. You well, know, you have it, to, as a human, figure. know what are the security right. best practices, right. too, which is something that Kix offers, because even if you don't know them, you're giving suggestions, right? Uh, we, we give everything, and we also recently added, because, I mean, you mentioned developers, and, you know, they are a critical part, and now share most of the responsibility for a cloud-native application. So we also added auto-remediation, so it's not only about finding, oh, but also about nice. fixing. Oh. So we really give you, and we can automatically generate the code for you. Uh, but you mentioned like uh, the misconfiguration. Mm -hmm. I think the best example, and we saw that, is like ports. Ports are being left open because yep. who, you know, who remembers to close them? But we saw that there are special attacks that go over publicly available IPs. Search for those ports, like you know, mm -hmm. port 22 is the most famous one for you know yeah. remote access, and they yeah. simply brute force and gain access of your servers, and it can happen in minutes. Right. So this is why we we added kicks which is, you know, well adopted, one million, which is 
awesome. But what we also now see is that you can get started with Kicks, the open source. But once you need to scale it across the organization, this is where you know you need enterprise solutions like what we have in Checkmarks One. So it has Kicks inside as one of the engines. And we say in Checkmarks that the words run on code and we secure it, and we don't care what type of code. And right. because with Cloud Native, a lot of you know the areas are now being saved as code. We can scan it. We can help you find vulnerabilities, misconfiguration from the first line of code all the way to production. Right. Mm. Now, when you're working with devs, uh, and I know this because <laughs> I am one, we, we are a very um, particular bunch of people, right? We, we have very mm -hmm. particular ways of liking to work, very particular tools we like yes. to work with. You know, I, I personally, I'm a command line person, but I know people who live or die by their, their IDEs, their IDEs yep. Yep. right? Uh, and I do use an ID. I use Visual Studio Code. Um, but how does Checkmarks integrate with, with some of uh, the common developer tools so that are out there? We have a saying that uh, the repository is the center of the universe. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's not in the repository, it, it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. You didn't check it in, did it exactly. happen? Right. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the way that we, we integrate is we integrate seamlessly into anywhere in the life cycle, okay? It can be from the first line of code in the IDE, it can be on a pull request, it can be as part of you know, your pipelines, uh, and we have it all. And it's not about us, but it's about the customer and the maturity and the journey. If they want to scan like from the first line of code, we're, we can be there, okay? It's really about what works for them. And for you know, people starting with infrastructure code, I would not suggest start from the IDE because that would be way too much Right. Early in the cycle, the best way to start is through the pipeline. Okay. So you know, mm -hmm. if you're running um, hourly or continuous build, it's, it doesn't really matter. But this gives you proper measure to make sure that nothing breaks when moving to to the next phase. Yeah. But also not generate too much noise to begin with because that's like that's way too much for me to handle. Right. So I like so the fact that you can continue using the tools that you enjoy today. Yes. Right. You haven't got to go and necessarily learn something new. I, as a developer, I can just get heads down working on my code. I haven't got to step out to something else. Yep. Right. Because um, that induces friction. It, it, it has to and be. Then I work mean, for developers, it has to be as part of their day-to-day -to -day tools. Yeah. Can't if, break the flow. Exactly. Don't break the flow. If you yeah. will, you know, ask them, can you go to that system? That's a certain no. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to live where developers live in yes. their ecosystem. Yeah. Totally. And, yeah. and this is the approach that we're taking. Now, I, I love that you bring up pipelines, too. I, this is, uh, so when you were talking auto re remediation earlier, yeah. uh, are the auto remediations, uh, are, are they just commits to the repo? I mean, it, it really, it's, it's kind of almost a, a philosophic question. Oh, okay. Be, because, you know, we can tell you, but from talking to developers, don't touch my code. Yeah, this is what I'm usually don't hearing. Don't auto update. Right. So we can, we can do like full automatic but we prefer to take the, the semi-automatic. We can tell you, here is the fix, but you do the, the, the pull request or you know, the commit yourself right. because we don't, I don't want anybody to touch my code. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm hearing as well. But you know, we can have it all, uh, like all methods and we can support whatever, but this is what we suggest. Yeah, most people are, are utilizing it uh, under their control. Right, yeah. uh, before they, they accept the remediation. And I don't even know that it's like, don't touch my code. I think it's more like, I want to understand what's happening to my code before yeah. I just. And, and, and you know, there is in. also the implication. Let's okay. take, like, you know, open source. Oh, the, yeah. The remediation is, in most case or in some cases, is you need to upgrade to the latest version. And it may break everything exactly. <laughs> that you and, have and, you know, running. I would not want any, <laughs> anyone, any developer to come to me, you told me to, to upgrade to version right. whatever, and it broke my entire, like, now I need to fix 30 different bugs or, right. or regression. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. we, we can give you, you know, the suggestion, the advice, and you take it and you do it the, the way that you cool. want it. All right. I love it. And this is one of the areas I'm super passionate about. Adding security to development workflows, it's vital. It, it, we have to do it. it. It's happening. And I'm so happy that you all are here helping that ha to happen. We've got 30 seconds left. Do you want to sure. leave uh, our viewers with anything? Absolutely. So, I mean, you can use Kicks now. You go to kicks.io. It's open source. You can give it a test drive. It takes three minutes to install. And once you have it up and running and you want to take it to the next level, this is where Checkmarks 1 comes in place. And this is how we can help you, you know, scale your security. And we say the words run on code, and we help secure it. So make sure to come and visit our booth. Thank you very much.
Go check out Kicks and get a piece of cake. cake. We'll yeah. be right back. Right. Stick around for more on AWS On Air.